as we usher in into the new generation with more focus on service-based games. It looks like GAAS, other words, games as a service, are being rejected. Let's get into it. What's up peoples, what's up peoples, what's up peoples, it's your boy MM2K back again with another one. Hey yo, can you do me a huge favor before we get knee deep into this one? Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, rock those bells for notifications please so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, cause I ain't too proud to ask. Alright, so I gotta be honest with y'all, you know what I'm saying, I'm a little dismayed over some information that I came across not too long ago, okay? One of my favorite games so far this year, if not just this generation alone, The Division 2, it's been reported that they did not meet sell expectations on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. All right, so in lieu of that happening, your boy MM2K had to sit back and think to himself. I had to say to myself, yo, with all the fanfare that I'm hearing on all these uh, podcasts and all over the gaming community stratosphere, how in the hell did this happen? And I just had to sit back and realize that the community support was just all bark and no bite. And why is that? Because The Division 2, with all of its notoriety, if it don't make sales expectations, then if you lump that together with everything that's happened with games of a service games as of late, if not throughout this whole entire generation, it makes you think, are we at a point to where we feel like we're oversaturated with these games already? What's the deal? So let's dig into it. First, you know how I do it. I'm gonna break this up in three parts. First, I wanna go over the article itself to take out the highlights of the article that I think are important. Secondly, I wanna talk about the gaming history again, this gen particularly with games as a service and how this all connects together. And lastly, I'm gonna give you your boy's thoughts. Okay, so let's get right into the article. This is a Forbes article written by your boy Paul Tassi and the headline reads, Ubisoft reveals that the Division 2 did not meet sales expectations on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The article starts off by reading, The Division 2 may hold honor on being one of the only looter shooters to debut with non-botched launch, but the game has fallen short of Ubisoft's expectations for it according to a recent investor call. Citing fierce competition in the market, Ubisoft CFO Frederick Dugit said that the game fell short of sales expectations on consoles, though he cited a tenfold increase in Uplay sales on PC as a silver lining and said that the game's next S update, its raid, is expected to do well for it. Okay, so here's the problem with that. All right, so that article was written a few days before this recording. The raid is already out. And even though a lot of hardcore followers of The Division love the raid, there is now anti-fan fear for the game in regards to the raid because it's not allowing you to do random uh, lobby searches for people to help you play in the raid. Now I've talked about this in an earlier video where I think that is definitely a farce because the whole definition of playing a raid is you teaming up with the best of the best that you can find, right? And then y'all going together to tackle a long drawn out, very strategic and very tough um, challenge presented in the raid. You can't do that successfully and in a fun fashion by just hooking up with random people online. But that's here nor there. I don't want to go too far in the weeds, okay? The fact of the matter is, is that the game did well for the PC people, but most of its highest prize came from console people. And the console people just sit and shot and supported this game. That's key here, but we're going to talk about that in full detail, but that's a perfect segue into the next point. What is the gaming history with games as a service as far as it relates to console gamers this generation? I mean, as far as console gamers are concerned, the very first big games as a service game that hit within recent history was Destiny. Now you know how that all started. It got hammered at first, but then people fell in love with it like me, you know what I'm saying? And then when Destiny 2 came out, it got hammered. I mean, people fell in love with it at the beginning, but then it got hammered again and it's been hammered ever since. Why is that? Due to what people consider a lack of content and an over gouging for DLC to keep content flowing. Now a lot of people said that The Division 1 suffered from that as well. The Division 1 people said after you reach level 30 and you beat the main campaign, there really wasn't much to do. 
and the term the grind in both the death in both in destiny and the division one game wasn't considered fulfilling enough to keep uh, gamers there playing those titles see i have a heavy and deep background in pc gaming so things called the grind you know what i'm saying which is replaying uh certain areas of the game over and over again to build up your character are synonymous with a lot of pc play we've been doing that for years if you've been gaming on pc but this is a new theory as it relates to console gaming and it hasn't been accepted very well console gamers are looking for strict confined linear but newer experiences consistently in order to keep their attention you got to have a story plot you got to travel from a to z and that's it once you get to z you're done with all the previous area until you're given another a through z area you know what i'm saying that's what console gamers are used to so the division two and the people at ubisoft remedied that by almost uh ten tenfold uh, multiplying how many people worked on the Division 2 and coming out with so much content you, you, you can't even go through it all in a lot of cases if you're the average gamer they gave you more content that you can handle and look what still happened then you had another game that was on the total flip side that was just a disaster from beginning to end which was Anthem and that uh, of course just left such a sour taste in the gamers mouths as far as it comes to games as a service now the most troubling for me is this game isn't out yet at the time of this recording, but then you got Ghost Recon Breakpoint coming up at the end of this year. Now, again, uh, Ubisoft is vowing to give a whole bunch of content out there, get a whole get a whole bunch of it uh, out there at release, and have it steadily pumping for the gamer. But again, look at how successful that made Division 2 on console. Didn't really do much, right? Because they fell short of expectations. And really, with the Division 2 coming out in a earlier part of the year and ghost recon breaking point coming out in the latter part and they're very similar games just different uh aesthetics is it really enough gonna be in this new ghost recon to warrant it to be released within the same year and to guarantee its success i don't know i have my questions about it and a lot of other people have their questions about the game so once again you could have another game that's doomed to not reach expectation now, what are MM2K's thoughts overall on why all this is happening? Very simple, very simple, people. Like I've told you before, there is a reason why console gamers are not turning out and churning out in droves for these games as a service game. Yes, part of it has to do with what I mentioned earlier as far as um, them looking for more defined and more linear experiences. But the reason why that's the main expectation now is because, think about it. Console makers influence the genre defining titles each generation, right? Now the games as a service model was introduced this generation by who? As a new gaming strategy, by Microsoft. But even that being the case, Microsoft did not put forth their best efforts in regards to this type of gaming strategy. Its efforts were weak. On the flip side, Sony has put forth their best efforts put forth their best foot forward whether you like those games or not and have garnered more attention with the more linear and more uh construct story driven games with guardrails to them right so with that being the case and if console makers with their exclusives drive the genre defining titles it's no brainer why <laughs> games as a service are suffering so yes in a long-winded roundabout way playing six degrees of kevin bacon yes who am I blaming for this? I'm blaming Microsoft. I mean, I get it. With all of the recent news about Microsoft working in tandem with Sony and getting Sony to use the Azure servers, and if you listen to Scram Punks, we had a nice battle with my homeboy King Thrash about it, and then I've been dropping videos. I get that. As far as the long-term financial success of Microsoft and gaming, the, the future looks bright for them. But come on, guys. And I'm an Xbox enthusiast, but come on guys, we gotta be honest here, we gotta keep a jiggy. It ain't about bashing Microsoft, it's always keeping your head on a swivel and demanding what you want. For the type of games that we want, for the type of games that brought us to the Xbox, you gotta think, is the games as a service model being doomed before it really has a chance to lift off? Because the biggest stewards of this gaming model have not put their best foot forward. So here's what I'm saying, Microsoft, if you're listening, and if you're truly gonna make Halo Infinite a games as a service title, then you better put your foot into it. You know what I'm saying? You better do the best damn job possible. Because if Halo Infinite 
being a games as a service title doesn't do fantastic not just good not even just well but fantastic then guess what gas aka games as a service will run out of gas before you know it and that's it from your boy mm2k you know what i'm saying Hey, let me know what you uh, what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me or come at me. It don't matter to your boy. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. I'm on the corner of every boulevard, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, I do a show with your peoples. Snow Bunny, Dirk Griggity, Neethos. It's called Scram Punks. We had a fantastic show the day before this recording. You got to check it out on Dirk Griggity's channel or look up hashtag Scram Punks for more information on that. And last but not least, Follow my brethren, the Broadband Bullies, man. Hey, yo, check out the links below. Check out that Patreon link. Check out that Discord link. Check out the link to the merchandise and the gear. It's fly. And as always, as always, you have a wonderful gaming day.